Hey guys, how's it going? T Blake here. And this has been a video a lot of my younger audience has been asking for a very long time. As you guys may or may not know, I am currently attending business school at Babson College in Massachusetts, and it's been the number one school for entrepreneurship for the last basically two decades. So the business education we get here is pretty tailored and very specific. And a lot of the things that I've learned about entrepreneurship, I've applied to the rest of my life. And one of those things definitely has to do with the way I look at money and the way I spend and think about money in general. So this video is going to go into detail with some of the reasonings behind my spending habits and why in a world where a lot of things are very materialistic and it's very driven to get different things and acquire material things, how I think about that spending in that area and how I'm able to consistently pick up new sneakers without having zero dollars in my bank account or owing my mom money, et cetera, et cetera. So first and foremost, the way I think about spending and saving. So saving wise, it's really important as a younger person to divide your money in any income you get and basically split it 75-25. The most important thing with this is you should always be saving about 75% of what you have and only allocating 25% to spending. This is a very rough estimate, but for those of you that are working jobs, it's always good to have money in your bank account to sit on or invest when an opportunity arises, then consistently spending that money on things and not having money on hand to make a smart investment. Now, when I'm talking about investments, I'm not talking about necessarily stocks and bonds, but it could just be an opportunity that pops up. For instance, a random restock or something speaking to sneakers where there's an opportunity to purchase something and make money off of it and you always have that in reserve. So when it comes to saving, a lot of you guys that have been watching this either may, one, not be old enough for a job, two, not be able to find a job, or three, feeling that they really can't make money. So first and foremost, there's always opportunity to make money regardless to how old you are. A lot of people have the opinion that they choose to blame others or the world around them for their current situation which to a certain extent can inhibit you, but if you're willing to work hard enough, there are always gonna be opportunities for you to make money. So if you have that mentality, this video is not for you, and I can honestly tell you, if you stick with that, you will never achieve or purchase or have what it is you want to have in life. So just erase that mentality right off the bat. So going into some ways you can make money. Well, first of all, there are a lot of places that are hiring young people to do different works, and while you're making minimum wage, that money can add up, and if you have enough saved away, you can then spend that money onto bigger and better things or invest that in different opportunities. For me, I took money that I made from a job, invested it into event planning, putting down that money on an event, getting people to come to the door and making money on that. I'm talking about what I've done specifically. Of course, you can literally find an avenue in anything you're passionate about. It just happens to be sneakers for me. If you're saying, well, I don't have a job, I can't get work, I can't get hired, well, chances are you have a birthday or some sort of holiday where you've taken in money. So saving that as a startup, even if it takes a full year and not spending it on a pair of sneakers or something, to save up that money is definitely going to be more rewarding than going out and buying something that you might find is not important or something you find you don't like in the next couple of weeks. All right, that's very basic about spending and saving. I can go on for much longer, but I think I want to address the next topic, which is how I choose to spend my money and why it is I'm able to justify spending large amounts of money on different things. So basically, when I'm looking to purchase something new, whether it's sneakers or clothing, I think a lot about the resale value. A lot of people think of resale as in buying for retail and selling for more, but the way I wanted to frame resale in this conversation is thinking about how that item retains value. So for instance, what I'm wearing today is called the Supreme Box Logo Pullover. Supreme Box Logo specifically, one, are always in demand, very difficult to find, and there are constantly collectors that are going after them. So when I sit down and I make a purchase from Supreme, even though that shirt or that t-shirt is $70, or in this case $150 for a pullover, I know I will either get my money back out of it when I go to sell it, or get most of it out when I go to sell it. For instance, I picked up a Supreme long sleeve, $90. Most people would say, you're an idiot for spending that much. Why couldn't you just get a $20 t-shirt from PacSun or something like that? Well, first and foremost, I've had a lot of $20 PacSun t-shirts and they're cool to wear for a couple times, but after I get tired of them, I literally donate them to charity because there's no aftermarket for that. No one wants to buy that shirt afterwards and I've essentially wasted $20. Now going back to the Supreme example, 
I bought an item that sold out. So now there's a demand for it already naturally. And because I've worn it maybe six or seven times, maybe now that $100 t-shirt is probably only worth 70 bucks to me now. So when I go to sell it for $70, I've only lost $30 of what I've spent. So I've broken that down to, you know, I've worn it you know, six to 10 times, let's say 10 times for the easiness of the math. That's been three dimes aware that I've gotten out of that shirt. So I wore it a bunch, cost me $3 each, and now I've only spent 30 bucks on that shirt. Whereas that $20 or $15 shirt, I might wear once or twice, and when I'm done with it, I lose all of that money that I put into it. So this is just a different way to think about it. Next, an overarching rule for buying things is definitely go through a strong thought process. There are a lot of things that we desire to have, that we want to have. And if you're ever putting the things that you want to have before the things that you need to have, you're making a huge mistake. I never purchase anything that I want to have before I haven't taken care of what I absolutely need. There is no bigger mistake a younger person can make than putting aside the things they need and actually need or that can help them make money or help them be a better person or help them get to that next level and instead are spending that money on sneakers or clothing or something they don't actually need. You will never get that investment back and the people that are actually saving, sure you might be cool to stun on Instagram with whatever it is you have, but the people that are saving in the long term are gonna be those people that are actually reaching their goals as opposed to the people that are impulsively buying every single time. So make sure you take care of your needs and when you go to buy something new, keep in mind the resale value. If you're really buying something, it, make sure it's something you really want, make sure it's something you feel you love, and make sure it's something you feel that you can resell and get your value out of when you're tired of it. So hopefully this video helps frame the conversation of buying and selling as a teenager, as a younger person, and hopefully you guys can pull away some things from this that I've learned not only in college but throughout my life as a 20 year old now uh, that have certainly served me well in the past couple of years in terms of always having something new or having something nice. I just use this strategy and I'm always able to pick something up uh, after either getting the value back out of it um, or strategically saving my money. So definitely keep this in mind guys. I hope this helped and if you can hit that thumbs up button for me it goes a super long way. T-Lex signing out. Peace guys.